Visionaries, Kazon Church community, we're so glad that you decided to join us for our online messages. If you're in the St. Louis area, we've got something very special happening at our in-person services through the entire month of July, and it's called At The Movies. And what's At The Movies, you may be asking? At The Movies is something that we do at our church that's very similar to what Jesus did when he was teaching. He would often use stories or parables to illustrate the ways of God. And so what we're going to do is we're using movies, blockbuster films that you know and you love to illustrate biblical truth in our lives. It's going to be a phenomenal series, but because of copyright laws, we can't show that online. But we do have something very, very special for you. We've got amazing messages that you're going to see, some old, some new, that I believe are going to be powerful and impact your life. Before we get to those, though, I do want you to know, if you're in the St. Louis area, come visit us on Sunday mornings at 11 a.m. at 6923 West Florissant. We've got something so special. It's fun month. It's at the movies. We've got free popcorn. We've got games. We have giveaways. And we've got at the movies. So come join us if you're in the St. Louis area. But for everyone else, check out these powerful messages that we believe are going to impact your life. And our prayer is that we continue to present God's vision to you so that you believe, you love, and you live Jesus. What's going on, visionary? Shout out to all my Kazon Church family. It's so good to be back with you another week. And I hope that you are ready for the word of God. Y'all know how we do things around here at Kazon Church. If you're ready, type down in the comments, say, I'm ready. All right, then, if you're ready, y'all already know. So am I. We are in week four. That's right, y'all. Week four of our series that we are calling Beyond. That's right, Beyond. And our theme scripture for this entire series has been Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20 from the Amplified Version. And it reads as this. Now to him who is able to carry out his purpose and do super abundantly more than we dare ask or think infinitely beyond our greatest prayers, hopes or dreams, according to his power that is at work within us. And this entire series, our goal has been to show you that our God is by nature infinitely beyond. If you missed the first three weeks, check right up in here. You'll see it. It'll pop up somewhere up on here so that you can see it. If you're watching on YouTube, if you're watching on Facebook, just go back and look on our Facebook page and check all of the previous weeks out. But the whole goal of this has just been to show you that God is infinitely beyond. He's able to do it, able to carry out his purpose and go infinitely beyond in our lives because that's who he is. This is the God who said, let there be light. And there was. He created the universe with just by speaking it. And, and this is the same God that we serve. This is the God who sent his one and only son for us. He is by nature beyond. And every week I've shown you in scripture different instances in which God goes beyond. Some of them have been promises. We looked at some of the promises in week two about forgiveness and how God always goes beyond when it comes to forgiveness. And then week three, we looked at how God goes beyond even when we trust him with the area of our heart, even concerning our finances. Today, what I want to do is I want to look at a few instances in scripture that God continues to go beyond, to show you that God is beyond. He was beyond then, he will be on, he's beyond now, and he will be beyond even in our future. And here's what I've noticed is that for many of us, when we think about God going beyond in our lives, we think to ourselves that it has to be outside of what we already have. Like many of us, we may think that, that we need uh, more education. If I had more education, then God could do more through me on my job or I could make more money. Now, is education uh, important? Yes, it is. And could you, can you make more money uh, if you do get more education? Yes, you can. We're talking about our God going infinitely beyond. We think we need more, more education. Sometimes we think we need more people around us. If I had more people in my life, more people supporting me or more people helping me in this vision, and if, if they could use their resources, then I could do what God has called me to do, and we, could, we would see God go beyond. Many of us even think if we just had a, a more money, that God could go beyond. If I just had a million dollars, I could do all the things that God has called me to do and God could go beyond. And while, listen, while there is nothing wrong with, with desiring more and believing God for more, 
here's what I want you to know that oftentimes God will go infinitely beyond from where we already are and with what we already have. The title of today's message is what you have is all God needs. Maybe right now, you are a, a college student starting your first semester in college or, or maybe you're just maybe you're finishing your final year no matter where you may be shout out to the uh, Harris Stowe University uh, students the class of 2025 that they're starting today shout out to you all and shout out to all of our students whether they're there or, or starting in high school even in middle school in college grad school no matter where you might be maybe you're starting a brand new job shout out to you no matter where you might be in your life this message is for you if you have a dream in your heart this message is for you maybe if you've lost and stopped dreaming this message is for you what you have is all God needs to go beyond so I'm going to show you three stories in Scripture a couple in the Old Testament one in the New Testament where God goes infinitely beyond with what people already had they were searching and thinking they needed more but he says, what you have is all God needs. Let's look at our very first story. And this story comes from 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 1 through 7. There was a prophet named Elisha, uh, who was a man of God, who would speak God's word, who was telling the people what God was saying. And here we are in 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 1 through 7. And here's what it says. One day the widow of a member of the group of prophets came to Elisha and cried out, my husband who served you is dead and you know how he feared the Lord. But now a creditor has come threatening to take my two sons as slaves. What can I do to help you? Elisha asked. Because you have to understand that in that culture that if a, a woman was, was widow, that she pretty much, unless her husband left her everything, she was pretty much destitute. And so her husband had left her some things, but, one of the, but a lot of it was just debt. And a creditor was coming to take her sons away as slaves. And Elisha says, what can I do to help you? Tell me, what do you have in the house? He didn't say, oh, well, maybe if you go out and you get this, you get that. He started with the question, tell me, what do you have in the house? Remember, what you have is all God needs. She said nothing at all. I mean, except a flask of olive oil, she replied. And Elisha said, borrow as many empty jars as you can from your friends and neighbors. Then go into your house with your sons and shut the door behind you. Pour the olive oil from your flask into the jar, setting each one aside when it is filled. So she did as she was told. Now I want to pause here. This woman came to the man of God, the prophet of God, and said, my sons are about to be taken away. I'm about to lose everything that I that I care about and love because I've already lost my husband. But now I'm about to lose my sons to help pay off this debt that we have. And, and the man of God looks at her and says, listen, what do you have in your house? What do you have? And her response was like many of our responses when when we think about what do we have? I don't really have anything. She said nothing. Uh, maybe you're thinking I don't have the money that I need. To, to, to do whatever it is God's called me to do. Maybe you're thinking, I, I don't really, I don't have the connections. I'm not living in the right place in order for me to do what God's called me to do. I didn't even necessarily want to come to this school. Like I really wanted to go to this other school, but like this is all that we could afford. And it's the only place that gave me a scholarship, which was barely anything that I could, I could get. I don't really have anything. And then she responded though with accept, almost like an afterthought. You know, and that's how a lot of us are. When we think about the things that God has given us and placed in us, a lot of times we go, I can't do that. I, I mean, I can't really do it. I don't, I don't know a whole lot of people. I just have a few friends. Well, those friends are very important and God placed them in your life. What you have is all God needs. I want to do all of these things with, with like media and YouTube and all of these things, but I don't have this expensive uh, 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 camera equipment and lights, but, but yet, what do you have? I don't have anything except this this cell phone, what you have is all God needs. 
The, what did Elisha do? He tells her, what do you have? All I, ha I have nothing except a flask of oil. Now, here is a picture of what they believe the flask of oil looked like at that time. It's not very big. Oh, we're talking about this little thing that can be held in someone's hand. And Elisha said, take that. Go and borrow as many empty jars as you can from your friends and neighbors. Go into your house, shut the door behind you, and pour olive oil from your flask, the one flask that was, you just saw the picture of it, and pour it into the jars, setting each one aside so uh, when it is filled. So she did as she was told. So what did she have? What she had in her house was a flask of oil. It was something. It wasn't like she had nothing. She, she had something. And you all have something as well. It could be the gifts that God has given you. It, it could be, you know what, I don't have a million dollars, but you know what, I have a hundred dollars that I can invest into myself, into my education, into me learning this or learning that. What do you have? You have, you have a car that can get you from here to there. What do you have? You have a bus pass that can get you from here to there. What do you have? You have gifts, you have talents. What do you have? You have people that, family, friends. If you notice, she said, all I have is this flask of oil. But then what does Elisha tell her? Go and borrow these jars from your friends and neighbors. So she didn't just, she had the flask of oil, but she also had community. She had friends and neighbors. If someone tells you go borrow some stuff from your friends and neighbors, you already have to have some type of connection with them. Like you're not gonna go up to a stranger and be like, yo, can I get, uh, uh, can I borrow some stuff? These are people that she knew. She had connections. You, today, you have family members, you have friends, right? You have coworkers, classmates, you have people that God has placed in your life to help you accomplish what God has called and created you to do. What you have is all that God needs to go beyond. Let's keep going. Her sons kept bringing jars to her and she filled one after the other. So she went and got all of these jars from her friends and neighbors. But remember how big that that flask of oil was. How was she able to continue filling all of these jars and containers with this small little thing of olive oil? Because God was went beyond what she had was all God needed to go beyond. Let's keep going. Soon every container was full to the brim. Bring me another jar, she said to one of her sons. There aren't any more. So she's probably, I don't know how many jars she had, but she had a, a bunch that they, they kept filling them up with this oil. There aren't any more, he told her. And then the olive oil stopped flowing from that little flask. When she told the man of God what had happened, he said to her, now sell the olive oil and pay your debts and you and your sons can live on what is left over. God went beyond with what she already had. She had the olive oil and she had family members and friends. She had friends and she had neighbors, people that she had been connected with. She had community. And with that olive oil and with the community, what she had was all God needed to go beyond. And not only was she able to get out of debt, she had enough to live off of. God went beyond. And some of you right now, you're watching and you're thinking you don't have anything except. I don't have anything except my associate's degree. I don't have anything except a computer. Well, guess what? What you have is all God needs. Write the book. Take the pictures. Take the video. Go to that class. Call your friends. Talk with your neighbors. Listen, what you have is all God needs to go beyond. She had a flask of oil and filled up multiple jars, so many that she was able to sell it all and live off of what she had left. I don't know what you're going through, but here's what I'm here to tell you. What you have is all God needs to go beyond. If you also notice what she did, and then we're gonna go to our next story. She had faith in what the man of God had told her to do. She took a step. She could have just said, well, I got this oil, but I'm not going to do anything with it. I have these neighbors, but I'm not going to go to them. She went and did what he had instructed her to do. And so what I'm here to encourage some of you today, you've been coming to church. You've been praying. Some of you have been fasting. Do what God tells you to do. If you do that, 
and you're obedient to him and your trust is in him, he can and he will go beyond because what you have is all he needs. Let's go over to the New Testament. This is an, uh, a story from the book of Mark, chapter six, verses 30 through 44. The apostles returned to Jesus from their ministry tour and they told him all they had done and taught. Then Jesus said, let's go off by ourselves to a quiet place to rest a while. He said this because there were so many people coming and going that Jesus and his disciples didn't have time to eat. So they left by boat to a quiet place where they could be alone. But many of the people recognized them and saw them leaving. And the people from many towns ran ahead on the shore to go ahead of them. Jesus saw the huge crowd as he stepped off the boat and he had compassion on them for they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. Late in the afternoon, his disciples came to him and said, this is a remote place and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go by nearby farms and villages and buy something to eat. And Jesus said, you feed them. I love the disciples' honesty. With what? How are we going to feed all of these people? How are we going to do this? They're thinking naturally. We would have to work for months to earn enough money to buy food for all of these people. So we ain't got it, Jesus. We don't have it. There's way too many people, and we're about to find out here in a, in a, in a little bit. It says that there are 5,000 men, but it did not include the women and the children. So many historians believe that there were somewhere between 15 and 20,000 people on this hillside. And they looked, the disciples like, yo, we need to send them into the towns so, you know, so they can help the local economy. They can get something to eat. And Jesus like, you feed them. And they're like, hold up, bro. Do you see all of these folks out here? We ain't got it. And that's why I believe a lot of you are thinking the same thing in your own life. God has called you to impact people's lives, the people that are around you, and you're looking and going, I don't have what it takes to impact all these people. But remember, what you have is all God needs. Look at what Jesus asked them. How much bread do you have? Now, much, how much can you go by? How much do you have already? How much do you have? Go and find out. So the disciples, they go probably huddle up. There's 12 of them, and they probably like, look, Hey, Peter's like, hey, what do you have? What y'all got? Ma uh, Matthew's probably like, bro, I didn't bring anything. I, I thought we were going to go to the town, so I didn't bring anything. Andrew was like, well, my wife gave me some a loaf of bread, but like she gave that for me. Like, I don't have enough. I didn't bring none for y'all. This was for me. Then Bartholomew was like, bro, I, I got a couple. I, brought, I went fishing uh, before we came out here. And, but I mean, it's just two. I got two fish. That's all I have. That some of the other disciples, we, I don't have anything. I don't have anything. So they come back to Jesus and they say this. We have five loaves of bread and two fish. Because you can imagine. They go, look, OK, how, how much we got? OK, you got oh, you got one, two, five loaves and we got two fish. What are we going to do with all this? This is bread. This ain't even this isn't even enough for us, let alone for all of these people. But he said, bring, tell them how much we have. So let's go ahead and let's tell Jesus how much we have. We have five loaves of bread and two fish. Jesus told the disciples, have the people sit down in groups on the green grass. So they sat people in groups of 50 and or 100. And Jesus took the five loaves and two fish, looked up toward heaven and blessed them. What they had was all God needed. Two, two fish five loaves. They separate the people in the group. Jesus takes it, holds it up to heaven and blesses it, blesses them. Then breaking the loaves into pieces, he kept giving the bread to the disciples so they could distribute it to the people. Remember, two, two fish, five loaves, 20,000 people. That ain't enough. But look at what happens. They're breaking it into pieces. He also divided the fish for everyone to share. And look at the miracle. They all ate as much as they wanted. 20,000 people ate as much as they wanted off of two fish and five loaves. A two-piece Long John Silver's fish basket fed 20,000 people. But that's not all. And afterwards, the disciples picked up 12 baskets of leftover bread and fish. A total of 5,000 men and their families, remember, about 20,000 people, were fed. This is a miracle of God. This is God showing you that he is beyond. 
with what they had, two fish and five loaves. Jesus blessed it and 20,000 people were able to eat and there was enough left over for all of the disciples to take home a doggy bag. If that's not beyond, I don't know what is. But if you notice, they didn't go buy any more food. There were still 20,000 people. And off of that, what they had, God was able to go beyond. I'm here to tell some of you today that what you have is all God needs to go beyond. You don't think you have what it takes to impact people. The disciples already had the bread and the fish. What they had was enough for God to go beyond and impact 20,000 people's lives. What you already have, the gifts, the talents, the abilities that God has already given you is what God needs to go beyond to impact the people that he's God has placed in your life. He's already done it. You don't you some of you think I don't know how I can how can I serve and help kids find hope and life in Jesus Christ. What you have is all you need. Do you have a smile? You already have it. Do you have a little bit of energy that you can run around and jump with kids? Yes, you have it. If you have that, that's all God needs to go beyond. This is a miracle of God, but they didn't go and get more. God provided more of what they already have because if God is in it, he can go beyond. What you have is all God needs. And I'm talking to somebody today. You're thinking, I don't have what it takes. I don't have enough. And God is saying, all you have, What you have is all I need. And with what you have, I can go beyond and he can do the miraculous in your life. I've got one more story that I want to share with you from scripture because I'm telling you, I'm showing you how often God goes beyond. And I'm not going to read this entire uh, uh, story. I'm just going to kind of jump around in this one. But this is the story uh, of the of a man named Gideon, because everything that we've talked about up to this point has been kind of things maybe externally. Like, do you have a camera, a phone? Do you have these these different abilities? And, and those are those are great things, because guess what? God gives you the gifts. He gives you the talents and he gives you the ability. He is a good God. Every good and perfect gift comes from the father of life. The book of James tells us. So he's placed inside of you the ability to network. He's given you the ability to write. He's given you the ability to think. He's given you the ability to speak to people. He's given you the ability to to work with with numbers or or to work with build things. He's given you the ability uh, to encourage people. He's given you the ability to have mercy and help people. He every single person that's listening to me right now, you have gifts, you have talents, you have things that God has even blessed you with. Maybe it's a car. Maybe it's an education. Maybe what's maybe some of you already do have a lot of money. There are different gifts. There are different abilities, but they're all given by God to us. And he's telling us what he has given you is all he needs to go beyond in your life. And I, but I want to switch gears a little bit because those are all things and abilities that we have. I want to show you something else. I want to show you how who you are is all God needs. Because some of you, you're like, I know I've got these things, but I don't think that I personally have what it takes. I'm not smart enough. I'm not strong enough. I don't know enough of the Bible to do what God has called and created me to do and for God to go beyond. But let me show you a story. This is a man named Gideon. This is in the book of Judges, uh, chapter six. The people of Israel uh, had been disobedient to God. They had started worshiping other idols. And God told them, if you do this, I'm going to send another nation to to basically overwhelm you. And he sent the Midianites and the Midianites. Uh, basically had they were they were so hard on the Israelite people that they actually went and hid in caves to stay to get away from these people because they were so oppressive. And matter of fact, they would whenever they would grow grain and, and food and produce, the Midianites would come and plunder it and take it all. And that's where we see this man named Gideon in Judges chapter six, verse 11. Gideon is in a mountain hiding. And it says this: the angel of the Lord came and sat beneath a great tree at Ophrah, which belonged to Joash of the clan of Abiezer. Gideon, son of Joash, was threshing wheat at the bottom of a wine press to hide the grain from the Midianites. This dude is using a wine press, which basically where you would crush grapes to, to, to thresh out their wheat because they knew if the Midianites knew that they were threshing wheat, basically the, the, the chaff would kind of go into the wind and the Midianites would know, let's go get their stuff. So he's using a wine press. This dude is hiding because he's scared. And this dude is not at all ready to go to battle or go to war with these Midianites. He's just thre- he's threshing some wheat so that they have food to eat. And that's where the angel of the Lord appears to, to Gideon. 
And here's what he says to him. Verse 12, the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, mighty hero, the Lord is with you. Mighty hero is what he called him. This same dude who is hiding in a mountain, threshing wheat in a wine press so the Midianites won't find him. God calls him, the Lord is with you, mighty hero. Was he a hero in that moment? He would tell you, nope, because as we keep reading in, in verse 14, the Lord turned to him and said to Gideon, go with the strength you have. He called him a mighty warrior, a mighty hero. God is with you. And then the Lord said to him, go with the strength you have and rescue Israel from the Midianites. I am sending you. But Lord, Gideon replied, how can I rescue Israel? Watch what he says. My clan is the weakest in the whole tribe and I am the least in my entire family. Gideon did not see himself as a hero, but God did. And look at what he told him. The strength that you go with the strength you have. Gideon didn't think he had any strength. He didn't think he was a hero. But God said, that's who you are. That's who I've made you to be. And I've given you the strength that you have to go do what I've called you to do. And I'm here to tell somebody today that you may think I don't have all of these abilities. I don't have no I'll have all this knowledge. I don't have all this money. And God is looking at you and he's calling you today right now. He's calling you a mighty hero. And if you look all throughout scripture, there are so many times that God calls out who we are. His scripture tells us that we are redeemed, that we are strong, that we are more than conquerors, that we are overcomers, that you are called, that you are chosen, that you are strong in the Lord and the power of his might. That's what God's word says about you. Here was also something that Gideon had. Watch this. It said the Lord is with you mighty hero. And then it said, I am sending you, says the Lord. And the Lord says, I will be with you. So you understand, watch this. God was with Gideon. Gideon had God. What you have is all God needs. If you have God, then God is all you need. That's all you need. Gideon had God with him. The Lord was with him. And I'm here to tell somebody today, the Lord is with you. You're starting a brand new semester at school, students. The Lord is with you, mighty hero. You were called, you were chosen to do great things. And with what you have, the strength that you have, God can defeat an army. Come on, somebody. If you keep going in this story, I won't read it all to you. But, but Gideon takes a step and says, okay. I'll go do what you've called me to do. Now, he had a lot of questions for, for God and needed God to show him a lot of signs. Like a lot of us do. We need God. Show me a sign that I'm called, Lord. If I ain't supposed to be with this man, if I ain't supposed to be with this girl, show me a sign. That's basically what Gideon did as well. And so Gideon rallies these men together to go fight against the Midianites. And God tells him, don't you don't need all these people. And he whittles it down from like 30,000 men all the way down to 300. And they're going, hold up. Why is there only 300 of us? And there's like 50 to 100,000 Midianite soldiers versus the 300 of us. And then watch this as well. Gideon tells him, we're going to go to battle against them with no weapons, no weapons. And they're looking at him like, well, what are you going to fight with? He's like, here, everybody take a ram's horn. What's a ram's horn? This is a picture of a ram's horn. A ram's horn is basically a trumpet. <laughs> it's, a, it's a musical instrument. It was like, bah, 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 bah. that's what they had. So Gideon, who God called a mighty hero, rallies these 300 men to say, we're going to go fight against this army with no weapons, but with a trumpet, a ram's horn. And they said, I, okay. And I love how this, what God does. Because remember, what you have is all God needs. With these 300 men in Judges chapter 7, it says this. Gideon divided the 300 men into three groups. And he told them, keep your eyes on me. When I come to the edge, just do as I do. And as soon as I and these blow the ram's horn with me, we're going to shout. For the Lord and for Gideon. And look at what God did. All of these Midianite men were in shock and they actually started fighting against one another. The Midianite army started killing each other. 
And Gideon's army of 300 men defeated, with God, defeated the Midianites. None of them went in with a sword. They all went in with trumpets. And God defeated an army with 300 men and a man that just said, okay, Lord, I'll do what you call me to do. And I'm here to tell somebody today that the Lord is with you. And that while you may not think that you have all of these abilities and talents, I'm here to tell you something that you God is the one who gives you the abilities. But the, but the, the only ability that God really needs from you is availability. Are you available to God? Because Gideon could have said, nope, I'm not the one. I'm not doing it. But he said, I am available to do what you've called me to do, God. You call me a mighty warrior. You say that I'm chosen, God. You say that you're going to defeat the armies. You say that you've given me victory. I'm available to do what you've called me to do. And I'm here to tell somebody today, if you would be available to God, what you have is all God needs because God is fighting for you. God is with you and God will always go beyond. It makes no sense that an army of 300 men could defeat an army of 100,000 men with no weapons. It does not make any sense whatsoever. But with God, God is able to go beyond. And I'm here to tell somebody today, if you look at all three of these stories, whether it was the widow uh, in, in, in the book of 2 Kings, whether it was disciples, whether it was Gideon, all of them were available for God to use them. And it reminds me of an old song I can't sing. So just bear with me. But it says, Lord, I'm available to you. My will I give to you. I'll do what you say. Do use me, Lord, to show someone the way and enable me to say my storage is empty and I am available to you. If you are available, God will go beyond. So what do we do with all of this? Church, I'm here to tell you, have an open heart to God. Understand that you don't need more for God to go beyond. Look at what you have. Look at what you already have. Matter of fact, I'm going to ask you in the comments, just type, what do you have? already. Maybe it's, it's, an, it's an ability. Maybe it's just you recognizing that I have God on my side because what you have is all God needs. In all three of these stories, in all three of these instances, God went beyond. With Not when they had more, God provided the more with what they already had. And I don't care if you're a student. I don't care if you're a parent. I don't care if you're a, a pastor like myself. What you have is all God needs. I can't tell you how many times in my own life I've said, God, I can't do this. I don't have what it takes. I can't lead this church. I'm not that good of a speaker. Uh, I don't have all of this knowledge. I've never been a senior pastor of a church. Why would you call me to do something that I've never done? And God said, I am with you. And he's, he's not just with me. He's with you. He's with you. I said, God, how I don't know. I'm not living in the beyond. How can I lead this church to know how to live in the beyond? I, I don't have anything. I don't have more money to do all the things you're calling us to do at this church. And God says, what do you have? I said, I don't know. He says, what do you have? And I was like, well, I have some relationships. I know some people. He's like, what you have is all I need. And through, some of the, through many of the relationships that I have, all of the kids' equipment that we have here for our Z Kids ministry was from a connection, relationship. You have relationship, you have connections and what you have, whether it's ability, whether it's community, whether it's gifts, whether it's talents, whether it's things, what you have. College student, high school student, middle school student, parent. No, whoever you are, single person, no matter what you who you are, what you have is all God needs to go beyond. The question is, is will you be available? Will you present what you have to God? Let him bless what he all bless you and what you have. If you know that you have him, then you have all that you need. And he will go beyond because we serve a God who is able to carry out his purpose and do super abundantly more, not with more, but with what you already have and go infinitely beyond your greatest prayers, hopes, or dreams. You don't need more. You need God. And if you have him, you have all you need for him to go beyond. So Heavenly Father, thank you for this word today. 
Thank you for speaking to us, through us. And I pray that every person heard you, not me, they heard you with clarity and they will present whatever they have to you. But most importantly, I pray that every person realizes that they have you. If they're a believer, they have you living inside them. You are with them. You are for them. I pray that they don't start, keep looking for more. Not that, not that desiring more is a bad thing, but their focus will be to look to you. Because if they look to you, what they have, they can bring to you and you can multiply. You can bless it. You can go beyond, go beyond in their lives. And I pray that this week they will begin to commit to prayer, that they will be available to you. They'll bring everything that they have to you. And I pray that you will begin to go beyond as your word says that you will. As we continue praying, there are those of you right now, I, I'm here to tell you something. You may go, I don't have a relationship with Jesus. I don't. I've never committed my life to him. Here's what I'm here to tell you. God knew that you didn't have it, but he, here's what he did. He loved you so much that he gave his one and only son. He gave his best because he says, my people need something. And I have what they need. And he gave his one and only son, Jesus. And who is Jesus? He is the son of God who lived on this earth, a sin free life. Unlike you and I, we have all sinned. We've fallen short of God's glory. We've done things that have disappointed God. But God knew it. He said, I'm going to send my son. And Jesus became that sin, even though he was perfect. He was crucified on a cross. And on that cross, he became your sin. And he became my sin. He became all of our shame. And God on the cross turned away from him. Why? So that he would not have to turn away from us. He was placed in a tomb and three days later he rose from the dead as our resurrected Lord and Savior. And scripture tells us now that if you call on his name, if you say that Jesus is Lord, your sins are wiped away and you will have Jesus living inside of you. And what you have is all God needs. God gave you his son. And when you have him, when you accept him as your Lord and Savior, you will be made brand new. And if you want to receive Jesus as your Savior, then I want you to repeat this prayer after me. It's not this prayer that saved you, but it's your faith in who Jesus is. Because on church, nobody prays alone. So pray with me. Say, Heavenly Father, thank you for loving me. Thank you for sending Jesus to die for my sins. I believe he rose from the dead. And Jesus is Lord. God, fill me with your spirit. Make me more like you. And teach me to love others just like you love me. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, visionaries, let's celebrate. Somebody has come to new life in Jesus Christ, and what you have is all God needs to go beyond.